Well, none of us like to be offended. None of us like to be overlooked or put down or dissed. Um, that's a street as I'm going to get today. I'll have mercy on all of you. None of us like to be maligned or, or just, just treated poorly or rudely, and, um, at least at first. I've been thinking about this a lot, and I, I just have to say this to start. Um, if I tell you something, you promise not to be offended? Um, now, I hate when people say that. I'm sure you do too. Like, because what's the first thing you do when people say, or sometimes they'll say, I have a question for you, but if I ask you, do you promise not to be offended? And we all say this, we go, what is it? You know, because if, which sort of defeats the purpose of the whole conversation. Uh, but it's difficult because you or I would say, well, of course I can't promise that because you might say something offensive, right? Like, and if you say something offensive, I can't even help myself. I'm going to be offended, so I can't promise you that. Um, but, but, but here's what I want to tell you, and, and you might be offended, but I, I hope you won't, is that even though none of us like to be offended because it stings, it hurts, it, it, it keeps us awake at night sometimes if someone treats you really poorly or says something that's offensive or you deem offensive, um, some of you here this morning, and I say this not because your family ratted you out or I got, a, I got a mail, I got an email over the weekend, but some of you, you might have started to like being offended. In fact, it's kind of like, um, I was thinking about this, like nobody likes their first cup of coffee. Like I still remember like trying coffee going, <laughs> This is horrible, because I remember adults drank coffee when I was a kid, like nobody, there wasn't Starbucks, there was just like bad Folgers, Instamatic, freeze-dried astronaut coffee, but it seemed like adults really loved it, and so I remember sneaking some as a little kid and going, this is the worst thing. This is another reason not to trust adults, because nobody likes their first cup of coffee or, or their first glass of whiskey or their first cigarette, like, and, and we're just talking about the legal drugs that I'll talk about this morning, but no one likes that first hit or that first drink of coffee, but Man, I'm talking about now, I'm like, I could really use some coffee because I'm out. And if you want to put whiskey in it, I haven't drank in a long time, but it might make this morning really interesting. No, but, but I was thinking, like, how is it that we can try something that's sort of painful or bitter or gross and then really become dependent on it? I know I went to my uh, parents this weekend, and thanks for Dave filling in, and I heard you had a wonderful breakfast. Uh, my mom passed, and I will tell you, as a follower of Jesus, there are worse things than death because we are honestly, we were glad that she was in heaven. There were tears to see her, you know, her body laying there was, was painful. But wow, I can honestly say that a, um, a record family funeral is sort of a roast at some point. There were a lot of laughs and not by me. Uh, my dad killed it. Like my dad's 82 and he stood up at the funeral and he did... Like, I was like, man, the old man still got it. I mean, he was like preaching and talking. He was telling their story and people were laughing and people were crying. He didn't preach the whole thing. They had their pastor do that. But he, he told like the story of their life and like he named every one of our uh, brothers and sisters, there's seven of us total. He remembered the date they were born, all except for one, which I, th I thought was a pretty good ratio. <laughs> it was great because he's going through all this list of names and dates and when everything happened, and at the end, he just totally forgot one of my brothers. But that, it was, I, <laughs> but the funny thing is, I went to their house, and we got there about three in the morning, and it was three hours later, I'm rummaging through their kitchen going, if I don't find coffee, you know, like, I'll drive 47 miles to the nearest town in Missouri because I will have coffee. But I started out not liking coffee at all. And I would think this morning that whether it's coffee or whiskey or cigarettes, and God knows vodka tastes like nothing when you try it. And it's awesome. Not really. I mean, it's not awesome. Sorry, kid. Uh, but, but, but we can get addicted to things. This is not going the way I had hoped. <laughs> so, so, good song, Michael. Uh, smoke them if you got them. I, uh, this is not going well. I'm new here. But anyway, I was thinking like, um, we can get addicted to things that we really didn't like at first. And so you might be an addict this morning. No offense. And you might be addicted to being offended. And I know you're not going to believe that, but I think some of you are. My guess is in a room this size, I mean, we're in America and it's our national pastime. Like some of you have got to the point 
where you kind of like seeing something offensive and you kind of hope you're the first one to share it, right? Like you kind of like when someone treats you badly at the drive-thru because you go, ooh, I can't wait to tell people how offensive this was. Or you can't wait like when you see something offensive happen or, or you hear something that's offensive, you go, man, I hope nobody else noticed that because I can't wait. And it's weird. Some of you actually sort of get sort of a thrill out of being offended. Not at first, but like you've come to go, oh, you get a little bit of rush. And I'm not saying you like it. Like, I don't know if coffee tastes good. I just know I want some, you know? And you can get to a point, I know that because I see this in our culture in America, you can get to a point where you have a rush when you get that first offense of the week and you can share it. And you can get some likes and some thumbs ups. I don't, I don't know anything about social media. I'll leave that. I know more about whiskey. But we'll, we'll go back to this. But anyway, like I was just thinking like some of us are addicted to being offended. Now, not all of you. And so if you're standing there going, hey, I like what Raph said, he's right, like, if you've been at Action Church a long time, you probably are pretty good at being offended, because I say offensive things even when I don't want to, um, but, but even if you're not addicted to being offended, even if you don't have an offense problem, you live in a world surrounded by offense addicts, right? Like, we live in a world where being offended has become sort of a sport, it's become sort of what we do, and there are real consequences. In fact, there are plenty of consequences to go around. I mean, you're not going to probably see Rocket Raccoon anytime soon because of this whole offense thing, right? Because director James Gunn was super offended at stuff, and then someone else brought out offensive tweets that he had done years before and put them out, and he got fired from Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and that started to affect me at that point. Like, that's why I'm preaching this. No, that's not really it. But, but, but it happens, right? Like, people not only lose their jobs over someone being offended, you can honestly, right? Like, you could become unemployable. Not unemployed. You could become unemployable if you say the wrong thing. And, and here's something scary, guys. You may have already said it right? Like we need to deal with this because you may have already, I <laughs> know I have, thank God there wasn't social media at one point. Good being old in this case, like, but you might have already tweeted something or posted something or, and the internet is forever, baby. Um, and so it's a frightening, sort of difficult, and I know maybe you're going, good, good, offensive people need to be, need to be punished because they shouldn't be going, they're jerks, and, and, and I get that, and and some of you go, no, free speech is dying. And some of you are saying, good, good. We don't need as much free speech. I, I get that. Like, I understand it's a difficult thing. And that's why we're here this morning and why I want to talk to you. And, but here's the truth. Even if you don't want to offend someone, you could even be, let's say you're like, hey, I'm not addicted to being offended. I don't have an offense problem. I'm not offensive. I've never tweeted anything bad or posted anything bad or snapped charted and I don't know but like you've never done any of those things and you're feeling real good about yourself let me tell you something my friend you could be misunderstood right and I'll give you a perfect example of this I was pitching this sermon series to the guys the other morning <laughs> and here's what I was saying now I know I'm from Missouri and I speak really fast but I was saying like I want to talk about being offended in the month of October and I want to talk and, and I didn't make this motion but I said, I want to talk about our inward problem at Action Church. And I said, people have an inward problem, and I definitely have an inward problem. And they're all going, because they were hearing in dash word, you know, and I'm going, and I got a big inward problem. And they're going, really? You know, and this went on for, you know, not forever. And they started laughing, and I was like, oh, I get it. Like, but, like, that could have offended them in pitching this thing about offense because they all heard, like, Action Church has an inward problem, you know? And it was like, wow, that's, that's the way it happens, right? And so what do we do? See, now, here's why we need to talk because it's not just, like, this is not just a game. Like, dealing with this offense thing is something I think that we need a strategy for, right? Um, so what do we do? You know, do you just try not to offend people? Um, I'm not saying that's a bad option. I'm just listing options. <laughs> like, we're not doing that. No, no. Um, you know, but really, like, trying not to offend people is 
difficult, right? Because you could be misunderstood or you could just be old. I'm starting to get there. Like I was just, and I won't share any of these because I don't want him to be on unemployed. Just talking to my dad this week, like going, that's terribly offensive and you don't even know and I'm not going to burden you with that, you know? But, but it's weird. Like you talk to somebody in their 80s, man, they don't, they, they don't even, you know, so things that were, and it's funny because it's not even like, oh, you have to be 80. Like, go back to 2000 and things that we didn't think were offensive are now offensive or 2006 maybe and way back in 2008. It's crazy. So, so we need to, so trying not to offend people, I think is pretty good um, career choice, uh, but not perfect or, or be super politically correct. Well, that's, yeah, maybe you need to be in, in, your, in your job or in your life. But guess what, brother? That is changing. So, so that's going to be difficult. Or, or maybe just put a disclaimer after everything. Just say, no offense. You know, like, I, I wish that worked. That would, I wish that actually worked. You could just say anything you want and say, no offense. Um, or, or, or maybe... Maybe you don't care. Just go, I don't care. I'm not playing that game anymore. I'm just going to be offensive, you know? Like, um, and when I see that, I, I feel like as Americans, <laughs> um, this whole offensive thing is sort of like pickup truck flags. You've seen them, right? Like, you have a pickup truck. I don't know why you don't have one. I saw an F-150 out there. You're supposed to have a giant flag sticking out of the back. <laughs> Apparently F-150s come with a flag holder and go, you'll void your warranty if you don't put a giant flag there. But, but I mean, think about it. You see the guys flying around with the Confederate flag and you go, wow, they really like Dukes of Hazard." And then there's like, somebody else has like, I saw a truck with three American flags in the back, and I'm like, I don't even know what that means, you know? And then there was, I was Googling one the other day. It was the one with the blue line. It's like, I guess that's we support law enforcement. But it's kind of like, there's a flag war, and I got to say that carefully, or that's going to be offensive. But I was like, <laughs> if, you know, we don't really have to even put the flags in the back of the truck. It seems like it's knocking down our load handling ability. But... That's the way it is right now. So, so what strategy do we do, you know? Maybe we just shout down everybody who's offensive, you know, like shake some nickels in a can. They do that on campuses now when people offend them. So maybe, but, but we need a strategy, I was thinking, like, um, and this is just for Americans in 2018. This is just us. This isn't even like I'm talking to you as church people or Christian people, but, but here's the problem with that. Like, and, and I say this every week, but I have to say this now. If you're not a church person or you're not a Christian person, um, I'm glad you're here. And you're welcome no matter if you believe what I'm saying or not. In fact, I think you're super open-minded even to listen to a guy like me talk. So I appreciate that. Um, but that's just a problem problem that we all do. Now, now let me add something if you're a Christian this morning. If you're a follower of Christ, if you've said, hey, Christ is the king and I am not, um, and you sort of put that on yourself and said, I'm trusting Christ and he is my Lord and Savior, the problem is, is Jesus was and is offensive. <laughs> and when you read the Gospels, you realize, like, he wasn't even trying not to be a lot of times. Let me read this to you. This was from John 6. And we actually mentioned this a few weeks ago. Um, if I was listening to my sermon, I could tell you when, but I remember mentioning this. It says, when many of his disciples heard it, this is Jesus, um, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about it, this would be the problem of being a friend of Jesus. Like, he knows when you've been grumbling. Um, but, but he said, do you take offense to this? Now, if we were this morning to go, the Bible says never to offend anyone. Now, we're going to talk in coming weeks how we're not to bring offense to people unnecessarily. It's, I'm not saying be a jerk. But, but if it was the doctrine of the Bible of Jesus that, hey, we never offend one, you would hear Jesus go, guys, I'm so sorry. You took that the wrong way. He doesn't. He doesn't at all. He says, he says do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? He's like, what if I just rose up out of here and showed you I'm God and you are not? It is a spirit who gives life and flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. He's like, guess what? It's not me, it's you. I mean, that's crazy. It says, for Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it's granted by the Father. 
And after this, many of his disciples turn back and no longer walk with him. We find that like the majority of people who had said, I am a Jesus follower, just left. And if you heard the sermon before this, it was horrible. Um, I, I'm not saying Jesus preached a horrible sermon, but it was offensive, and Jesus is offensive. I mean, think about that. Jesus is still offensive. Jesus, I mean, we live in a world where we want to be totally inclusive, that no one is excluded. Jesus says, I am the way the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. No other way, no other religion, no other God, no other prophet, none of that. I'm the only way. If you want to meet God and you want to show up and live with God forever, just Jesus. That's what he said. That, my friend, that's offensive. Uh, what about this one? I want to make sure that we offend everyone, um, even Christians. So if you're a Christian, you're like, yeah, I'm going to put that on a flag on the back of my F-150 check this out. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. That hurts all of us as Americans, doesn't it? I mean, ah, I don't know if Jesus would get elected to city council if he were here. I mean, he's offensive. What about this one? Um, and this one bothers us because, especially in America, man, we value we value family more than anything. And I think that's great. Like there are worse values. My like, goodness, I'm so thankful for my family. But it says, if anyone comes to me, and now you're like, I thought Jesus said to love people. Why is he saying to hate? He's using a contrast. He's like, the way you feel about your family should be the difference between hating them and loving me. So he's like, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and and you're like, well, I hate my dad, so no, that's not it. He's saying, like, the difference in how you love your family and me should be, like, night and day, love and hate. You should love me so much more. I'm here. They're there. So he says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. I mean, that is offensive and not very inclusive. Um, and we could go on. Like, want to hear what Jesus says about marriage between a man and a woman? And you go, yeah, I do, because I believe that. Let's talk about what Jesus said about divorce. I mean, I can make all of you mad with Jesus eventually if we just quote Jesus. And that's not even the epistles or the apostles, which rhymes. So here's what Peter said. <laughs> Peter, best sort of best friend of Jesus, the guy who like totally uh, disappointed Jesus, but came back to lead the church, which I think should really inspire all of us. Um, he said these words, and it's sort of poetry, so it's a little weird, but I want you to notice like what he said about Jesus, because this is something that he didn't just make up. It's something the prophet said about Jesus and something that Jesus said about himself. He says, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house. And I do love this metaphor, not just because I'm in construction, but this idea that we're all part of this thing called the church. And we're all living stones being put into this wall together. But he says, oh, don't think each one of you are more important than Jesus, because he talks about Jesus being a cornerstone, like the main part of the building. It says, so you're living stones being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone. He's quoting the prophet. A cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that built, the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And then he says this about Jesus. And this is words that Jesus used. Jesus called himself a stumbling block. Um, a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And they stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. And oh my goodness, there's so many problems that come up with that. We could spend the rest of the day trying to figure that out. Because what he's saying is for those of us who do believe, for those of you this morning go, I am a Christian, I have chosen. Um, and then we would argue, did you choose or did he? I get that. But like, for those of you who said, Jesus is the Christ, he is God, I am not, he is Lord, I am not, he is the king, I, you get it. Um, he's the cornerstone, he's the foundation, the most important part of this spiritual, you know, house we are building, the structure built out of people, not things. But he said, for everyone else, Wow, is he offensive. 
Jesus called himself a stumbling block, meaning, hey, he's the thing that's like, and you, you don't know what a stumbling block is, but you do. We would call it like the corner of your bed because all of you have like walked around in the night, I know how I am, and just kicked that thing and it just says the horrible, horrible thing because it, it's nothing hurts worse. And that's what he's saying. He's like, that is what Jesus is. Like on one hand, we would go, oh, he's, he's the, the foundation, but to anyone who doesn't believe as we do, and if you don't believe he is God, well, guess what? It's very, very offensive, and you're going to trip over that every time. You know, you're not going to be able to, and that's the thing about Christianity that's interesting. Like, everybody goes, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and they think in America it means like I had Christian parents or I go to a Christian church. But to actually be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus, you will bump into the things that I read earlier, and many like them, and you'll go, oh, I am offended. I can't believe that. At a certain point, if you don't go, he is God and he is boss, you'll bump into crap that will make you leave. Um, so it makes it really difficult, right? So, <laughs> so it's, it, it's bad enough as Americans, as men and women and, you know, people um, to try to deal with this thing of being offended and not offending people. And, and we're going to work all month on this, so... It's a difficult problem. But I think as Christians, and I'm glad you're here this morning, um, if you're a Christian, because we have a bigger problem that we need to work on, that the very thing that we believe is becoming more and more offensive. Not less offensive. It's not going to get less offensive, gang. It's going to get more. So how, we, how, how do we live in that world? And, and how do we go through lives and hopefully keep jobs and friendships and families and still believe this very offensive, divisive thing. And so I have a proposal for you this morning. Now, last month, and I appreciate Josiah and, and Dave did the last, uh, last couple, or, um, but we learned five verses, and I'm sure all of you would come right up here right now and recite all of them. I'll just believe you, but we learned five verses, and we're not going to learn this verse. In fact, I, you're, you're forbidden to learn this. This is a completely different series. But I just want to propose this to you. It's pretty, you're like, I wish that would have been one of the memory verses because it's really easy. But I want to propose this idea to you and then we'll talk about it the rest of the month. But, but in the book of Proverbs, which is just a collection of wise sayings from thousands of years ago, and maybe, maybe one of the most remarkable books you'll ever read because... <laughs> Have you noticed, like, I, was, I saw something, it was a medical article from 98, I was researching something, and it said, there was a disclaimer up at the top going, this is no longer valid because we do not believe this to be, you know, and it was like, so, so something 20 years ago in medicine is no longer value, but these are sayings and, 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 and um, just these thoughts from thousands of years ago, and believe it or not, I believe, and I think we'll work through this, like, they still work. I mean, it's, it's crazy, really, if you think of it. But it says these simple words. It says, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. So what I want you to consider doing, and this is not a, you know, no offense. I feel like I have to say that. This is not a command. This is, I just would like you to consider being unoffendable. Not a word. It, it puts a little line under it when you put it in your phone. But I, consider being unoffendable. Um, and so that brings us back to our clever um, series title, like when people say no offense, you could honestly say what? None taken, right? Um, so, so I just want you to consider that, and I, and I hope to build a case for that this month, and sort of a, a mechanism and a literature and maybe a framework that we could do that. But, but of all the options we have, you know, to try not to offend people, <laughs> or stomp out the offended. I thought about that. Like, that, that would work, I guess, you know, or, or just be offended, you know, or be addicted to offense. Or Of all the sort of strategies we could think of, like, to deal with this problem that we're all facing, um, this is a pretty interesting one, I think, because it's saying, hey, you can't change people being offended. I mean, you could try, and, and we're going to talk about that. I'm not saying, just say, let it fly, baby, say what you want. No, 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 because you will be unemployable soon. Um, but this one you actually can control. We can, we can learn to do this. So I think it's a viable thing, this idea that we could be unoffendable. 
Um, now, now, here's why that is true, and this is something we're going to carry on, and I, I feel like this is sort of an infomercial for the next few weeks, but the reason why we can do this um, is found in English, actually, weirdly enough, is when it comes to offenders and offended, it's a give and take thing, right? In fact, we use that phrase, right? Sometimes for like a, a argument or that it was give and take, you know, but it's really true if you think about it. They say you give offense and you take offense or you get offended or you are offended. See, it's, it's active to give offense. It's the give and then it's passive, like the taking offense is passive. Like, and, and here's the thing that we don't really understand as Americans, but I think we can work through this. You don't have to do the taking, Right? Like, now, and I know it doesn't feel like that, right? It doesn't feel like that because you feel like, no, you don't understand. Like, they offended me. They gave offense. Like, like you, you don't know what she said or you don't know what he posted or the picture. The, oh, my goodness. Like, you, I, I'll send it to you. No, thank you. Um, but, but here's the deal. <laughs> There's another word, and this is sort of scatological, not very nice. But we say give people crap, right? And that's I'm being nice right now because I didn't have the whiskey earlier. But like we go, hey, I ain't taking no crap. Chew it back, chew it back, chew it back, spit. Uh, but like I, I'm not, but, but here's the thing. Like imagine a neighbor, um, a rude, offensive neighbor with a big dog. <laughs> Thank God I don't have this neighbor. I've got great neighbors. That like his dog comes and he just takes a dump in your yard every morning. And he doesn't clean it up. He doesn't even act like it. I mean, there are people who act like they're cleaning it up. He doesn't even act like it. Your neighbor just walks away. See, that's offensive, right? Even talking about it is kind of offensive. Um, and so you have a choice, right? Like, you have to, and that's the way being offended is. Like, there's something happened. You didn't ask for it. Obviously, there's no sign going, put it here, baby. That's awesome. No, I mean, like, you didn't ask for that, but you have to deal with that. But, but, but the, the, the point of Scripture and the point we're going to learn from this is not like that never happened or you can somehow magically go, oh, that'd be great if it just... But you have a choice, like, of what you do with that offense in the middle of your yard. You know, like, I suggest you grab a shovel and you fling it at your neighbor. No, fling it at your neighbor's house is not it. But, like, you, you could grab a shovel and put it in the, a bag and put it in the trash can and it goes away. Or you could take it inside and put it on your kitchen counter and be offended about it. I mean, that's really what we're talking about. Like, you bring it inside and post some pictures on Instagram and go, can you believe this was in my yard? This is disgusting. It's ruined dinner. Well, I guess it did. <laughs> and so that's really what we're going to learn from this, this, this verse is that we have a choice. Like we can't choose when people offend us. Like some people are just offensive. Um, I might be one of those people. I don't know. I've been told that. But, but we can't choose when that shows up in our yard. But what we do after that, we have a, we have a great range of options, um, and, and it's sort of interesting um, how the writer of Proverbs did something really interesting. Whoever, and these weren't all King Solomon's quotes; these were quotes that he's collected. And, and once again, I have to say how amazing you should read Scripture. It's pretty amazing to think about this 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 book that's thousands of years old. Like one thing that happened in my mom's funeral is everybody was quoting her. And my mom had some great sayings that we still don't understand. Like if you said something stupid, she would say horse feathers. I don't know. It's great though. Like uh, she used a couple other words when she got really mad. And we talked about that too, which was funny. If you can make a Christian woman cuss, that is amazing. I was best at it. I'm just saying. I don't, I don't want to brag. But, but here's the thing. Like it breaks it down into hatred stirs up strife. But love, it's like we think offended people, or people who offend us are jerks, and then we sort of have to be offended, and so we want to share that with others if we're addicted to it. Um, but this passage says that hatred stirs up strife, but love, the, if, if you loved people, you would cover up offenses. I mean, that is... Hmm. Easier said than done, but would that work? That's the question. It, 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 this is thousands of years. Is it even applicable? Does it, is it real? Like, you have to wonder that. I, I think about those things. I don't just come up here and go, here's what the Bible says. You know, like, I, it was even, I even believe the maps. Here's the map. Like, here. but, but I was thinking, like, is this true? 
And so I was like, my job, honestly, is just to come up with analogies and examples for you. Um, unfortunately, I failed because I can't think of a single example. Because what I would need to talk about this is like, imagine we had, and this would never happen because they never get elected, but imagine if we had a president who offended people. I mean, that couldn't happen. Like, you'd never get elected. But imagine, uh, maybe, they're not a president, a premier. I, I don't know because I couldn't think of a single person. That's but imagine, like, someone that was polarizing. And that would never happen either because, you, you know, it doesn't happen in our world. I mean, this is crazy talk. But imagine somebody super polarizing and someone who had, even though they had all the best words, tended to offend people. And imagine... And people would never be this dumb, but imagine, like, this is why it's a bad example, and I admit I failed. Imagine if the people who loved that person would do all sorts of gymnastics to cover up any offense that they made. And, see, this would never happen. This is why it's a bad example. I'm sorry. The people who hated this offensive person... Oh, they would get excited when they said something offensive, and they would share it, and they would do everything to what? stir up strife when this person was offensive. I mean, so that's a bad example because that doesn't happen in our world. But imagine a world where if you loved the guy or girl because it's present. It could be either. I love when people say that. Um, but, but, but imagine a world where this polarizing person and the people who hated him or her would do all sorts of work to cover up offenses, and the people who hated, or would do all sorts of work to spread the offense, and the people who loved that person would do all sorts of, and, and so I can't come up with an example, but I honestly think this would still work. Um, <laughs> and that sort of bothers us in a sense, doesn't it? Like, so what if I am loving? I'm supposed to, because it, it doesn't even say, see, I would like this better if it says hurt, hatred stirs up strife, but love ignores all offenses. Wouldn't that be better? Because you go, well, I'll just ignore them. They're offensive. That's not what it says. It says hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Like you're actively trying to smooth things over. You're actively trying to like, Make that go away instead of spreading it to all your friends and followers. Um, and it's sort of a stretch when you think about love, right? Except for the main chapter about love that we've all had in our weddings or in our friends' weddings. I mean, think about the love chapter. I, I just did, did this recently at my son's wedding and daughter-in-law. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude and what? I mean, you've heard this at weddings. You might have had it at your... It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. And check this out. It keeps no record of being wrong. That sounds a lot like smoothing things over. And check this out. It does not rejoice about injustice. It doesn't get excited when it's offended and share it with the world, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Can you imagine that? Like, that's saying, like, if something happened to an enemy of yours and it turned out like the report about them wasn't true, like, you'd be happy instead of being sort of, like, bummed that you couldn't tell everyone what a jerk they were. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It's always hopeful. And it endures through every circumstance. See, that's really the choice we're, we're left with. I want the band to come back up here. And, and I just want you to consider this. I'm not telling you you have to do this, and I'm not telling you it'll be easy. But I want you to consider this idea that we're going to work through this month, this idea of dealing, and, and here's probably why I don't like this idea, because it's something I actually can do. I like to hear sermons, and, and I like to hear, like, talks that tell me about really complicated things that I couldn't possibly have control over, so you go, hmm, good to know. This is not that. Super simple, super difficult, and it's something that all could do. Like, it's the one thing we can do in this equation, right? Like, the one thing we could decide to do when it comes to this whole offense problem that we're dealing with, this inward problem that we have, would be that we could choose love. 
that's a crazy idea. Like, we could choose to love our neighbor, the one whose dog craps in our lawn, as ourself. Or we could stir up strife. That's what hatred does. And it's so weird because it's backwards because we kind of think, oh, jerks are the one who cause it. And when I'm spreading this around, hey, I'm just sharing with others what a jerk they are. I'm not... St- so if I tell you something, do you promise not to be offended? See, I want to pray with you because my hope is as we, as we sort of work through this and pray through this and sort of live through this the next few weeks... Wouldn't it be great if we could honestly say, yeah, I promise not to be offended. Dear Jesus, um, God, we are flawed and broken people. And we live in a messed up world, and it's not your fault, it's ours. But I'm so grateful that you came to help us and came to save us from ourselves. And God, there's no one in here that's perfect. There's no one who isn't offensive in some way. And God, there's probably many of us that really struggle with just being addicted to this offense game that we all play now. But God, we're, we're going to trust you and learn from you. And so God, I pray that um, you would be with each of us this week because I know it's not even going to be an easy week. I know there's going to be plenty. I'm probably going to get offended on my way out this door, and I know many of others will. God, be with us and, and teach us. And God, I pray that Action Church would be an amazing place where people would choose love and not hate. In your name we pray. Amen.